Good morning. This is Lorna from Whitton United Reform Church with a midweek thought. I don't know about you, but I often wake up in the middle of the night with something that's going around in my head. And the other night in the early hours, I was thinking about God's justice, the justice of God. And that led me to think about the fact that judgment comes with justice. You can't have one without the other. As Christians, we tend to dwell on the love of God, which is absolutely right, because it's his love that draws us to him in the first place, and he is the God of love. God is love. But there is another side to love, and that is goodness. He is also good. Jesus said to someone, why do you call me good? Only God is good. Goodness includes an element of distinguishing between good and bad, what is right and what is wrong. Not just distinguishing between, but actually obviously being on the side of what is right. So that entails an element of judgment. We may not want to dwell on God's heart for justice and the accompanying judgment in particular, but to ignore it completely is to ignore something fundamental about God. Thinking about judgment then led me to think about fire. Not as in hell fire, uh, because I wasn't brought up to think about hell fire and damnation really. But as in just fire. Fire purifies. It takes out all impurities. And as I thought about myself being needed to be purified, needing to be refined by fire, consumed by fire, not physically, of course, but spiritually, it occurred to me that perhaps there would be nothing left once the dross was burned away. Human nature is sinful, but that of course is no excuse. Jeremiah recorded God saying, the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows what how bad it is? But I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. Jesus took what we deserved for our sins, which is just as well, because otherwise there would be no hope. I also read later Colossians. Make prayer a priority, informed by what's going on in the world around you, and infused with thanksgiving for all God has done for you. So then you start to think about what's going on in the world. And there is, of course, some good news. But there's an awful lot of bad news. And the bad news is the result of human wickedness in some form. Greed, selfishness, pride, lack of integrity, corruption, racism, anger, revenge, it goes on and on the list. But what was really frightening is that, if I'm honest, when I thought about it, within my heart there is a speck, or maybe a log, of exactly the same traits. Apparently the Times newspaper, many years ago, once asked the question, what is wrong with the world? And G.K. Chesterton's reply was, dear says, I am. Yours, G.K. Chesterton. Then the line of a hymn came to me. Look not on me, but on Jesus as found in me. Of course, when all the dross is burnt away, then what remains is Jesus, the gold, pure gold. So allowing Jesus to grow in me has to be my prime aim. And for that to happen, I have to consciously make space for him. A lot of people have been decluttering their homes during lockdown. Uh, I haven't had time to do that, but I really need to make time to declutter my life, my heart, in terms of faith. Jesus tells us that the way to do this is to remain in him, because he is the vine and we are the branches. So I think a two-pronged strategy is what's needed. To get rid of the sins that I have committed by repenting of them, and turning away from them. And secondly, making a conscious effort to eradicate the sins that lurk in my heart. I like the idea of being gold, pure gold, shining bright. Gold is valuable and precious. But of course, I am valuable and precious to God. So valuable and precious to God that he gave his son Jesus to die for me. Needless to say, you are equally valuable and precious to God. And God loves you so much that he gave his son Jesus to die for you. 
So I'm working very hard to try to increase the gold content of my heart, my mind, my mind and my soul. And I find huge encouragement when I'm trying to do that. In the words of Jude, Now all glory to God, who is able to keep you from falling away and will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence, without a single fault. And then, in Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, he writes, Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way, and make, may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. God will make this happen, for he who calls you is faithful. We use a phrase, don't we, to have a heart of gold. I'm praying for that heart of gold, and I pray that you too will have the same desire for a heart of gold. May the Lord bless you every day this week and in the future. Bless you. Goodbye.